Ladies and gentlemen, most welcome to this academic ceremony at ISS, the International Institute of Social Studies of the Erasmus University of Rotterdam. We are, or you are, witnessing the uh, public defense of uh, Donald Mwari's uh, thesis, the finalization of his research project. So, Mr. Mwari, we wish you good luck. Um, I would like to welcome in particular your wife, uh, Philippine, your son and daughter, uh, Brian and Lina, your brother and uncle, I've heard, most welcome here in the Netherlands and at ISS. And I would like to welcome Professor Wangwe next to me, who is from the, uh, who came specially from Tanzania, from the Open University, the Skitschertiers. And in the procession, there is also the Pro Vice Chancellor of the University of Namibia, uh, Professor Monemer. Most welcome. So, again, that shows that we are really an international institute. I'm very grateful for <laughs> you all for what you can educate to ISS. Mr. Donald um, I'll give you the opportunity to, uh, to summarize for us uh, the content of your thesis, uh, your points of departure, and your conclusions. Please come on. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Rector Magnificus, examining committee, staff and students. This afternoon I present my thesis, Institutional Innovations and Competitiveness of Smallholders in Tanzania. I will first explain the context under which this research was undertaken, and then proceed with the analytical framework, findings, and finally, the conclusion. In the contemporary globalized world, high productivity, quality, and efficiency are critical attributes of competitiveness. Since its independence in 1961, the Tanzanian economy has remained predominantly agricultural. Although the contribution of agriculture to GDP has declined from over 50% in, since 1960s to less than 25% today, it remains the single most important employer, occupying 75% of the labor force. A critical review of the economy, particularly the stylized facts on agricultural performance since 1961, however, suggests that smallholders who form a significant majority of agricultural producers are still caught in the low agricultural productivity scenario, characterized by poor quality and low output. Hence, this research was inspired by the persistence of this poor performance in export crop production, despite different tra trajectories of policies and interventions. While certain policies and interventions of the post-independence constituted contributed to the poor performance in export crop production, the structural adjustments and trade liberalization that followed the crisis years in the mid-1980s failed to make significant reversal as early safety. Therefore, the central hypothesis is that persistent structural and institutional constraints continue to inhibit increases in productivity, quality, and output of smallholders, and these require various forms of institutional innovations beyond the confines of markets as well widely theorized in the neoclassical tradition. The analytical framework was guided by the conviction that there is fundamental weakness in the conception of market institutions based on the neoclassical abstraction of free markets. This abstraction implies the view that the liberalization and the appropriate price signals will lead to the revival of agricultural productivity, as was put forward in the well-known Bank report published by the World Bank in 1981. Instead, the thesis is based on a framework that invokes the embeddedness of markets into social structures in the analysis of competitiveness of smallholders export, export, export crop production. It draws from literature on industrial organization, value chain theory, and institutionalist perspectives. Institutionalist perspectives developed and applied by different scholars such as Meblen, Hogson, McIntosh, Winter, and others set an important foundation for centrality of institutions in the workings of markets. This has been combined interactively with discourses of industrial organization from scholars like Porter, Roderick, and Hausmann, and the value chain theory influenced by the work of Gareffi, Doward, Colton, Kidd, and many others. The core argument underlying this framework is that proactive and collective actions among market and, market and non-market institutions are crucial 
for addressing market failures and other policy and institutional inequities that impede on competitiveness of smallholders. In the analytical pursuit of this argument, this research adopted an interdisciplinary approach under which four analytical handles were just looked opposed into an in-depth inquiry of three case studies involving smallholder production of cash crops. These analytical handles include the institutional design, land allocation and tenure systems, credit systems, and access to commodity markets. Three cases represent a, a diversity of crop characteristics, historical evolutions in the institutional setups, and existing organizational practices. This approach enabled a more detailed understanding of the processes of institutional change and their outcomes and interactions between different institutions and the importance of meso level intermediaries. Having given the context of background, the analytical framework and methodology, I will now move on to the findings. The findings of the research corroborate the central argument, showing that proactive and collective institutional actions produce outcomes that are fundamentally different from those based from either markets or non-market institutions working in isolation. Specifically, the findings suggest that improving export crop competitiveness in the environment of smallholder production requires strategies to promote meso level intermediate coordination directed at eliminating binding constraints specific to relevant subsectors, as the three cases indicate. First, in the coffee subsector, it is seen that while the evolution <coughs> in the pattern of global production and consumption of coffee has led to bifurcation of markets, Tanzania failed to position itself within a particular segment of the market and found itself left in the middle. The policy shifted towards relying solidly on liberalized market system, throwing the baby out of bath water by not recognizing the role of meso level institutions in sustaining quality and output of coffee. It also shows that while remaining limited in scope, recent interventions pioneered by Technosave, a non-market intermediate institution, to reposition coffee producers within the high quality segment of the market have shown positive results with increasing volume of high quality coffee and premium prices for growers. Second, in the size of subsector, research shows that attempts by the private company to integrate smallholders in the size of production turned out to be a disguised form of peace employment rather than business partnership as was construed to be. Underlying this relationship is a substantial imbalance characterized by the company's full control of all key resources, including access to land, with limited countervailing powers on the part of smallholders. This cannot be expected to promote production efficiency and export competitiveness of Tanzanian sites of industry. Finally, in the sugar subsector, the study finds that even though intermediary organizations of cane outgrowers in Tanzania have played a significant role in linking the outgrowers with processors in ways that reduce transaction costs, limited attempts have been made to provide a better coordination among outgrowers themselves in relation to productivity enhancing farming practices. The example from Malawi, as shown in this thesis, highlights the market difference in productivity between a well-coordinated production on one hand and fragmented production as practiced in Tanzania on the other. In conclusion, this research has shown that production and competitiveness of smallholder agriculture does not rely only on liberalized markets, but also requires coordination and forms of collusion uh, of market and non-market actors. In terms of theory, this research hopes to contribute in several ways. First and more foremost, it seeks to use some aspects of organizational literature that is more often applied to manufacturing and technology intensive sectors to explore intricate relationship between diverse actors and, process, and the processes of institutional change in the setting of smallholder agriculture. In addition, the research departs from the traditional overemphasis on the role of state for initiating successful industrial policy while undervaluing the roles of markets and other non-state institutions. From the institutionalist perspectives, this research approach integrates historical analysis and connects analysis of institutional dimensions at macro, meso, and micro levels to examine, to examine specific outcomes in different contexts. 
the significance of path dependence, a central notion underlying evolutionary economic theory is discussed within this innovative analytical lens. The centrality of institutions in the analysis of economic change is also made visible by a conscious distinction, distinction between real markets and abstract, abstract markets. The former is more endemic in everyday life of transactions and exchange, making it critical to come to terms to a variety of institutions and the different roles they play in the making of real markets. In terms of value chain theory, this research concludes that integrating smallholders into international commodity chains is a more complex process than often thought to be. It can not be induced automatically through international trade in price policy. Institutional interventions at measure level and contextually customized mechanism of chain governance that respond to technical characteristics and the political economy are also important elements of successful integration. Last but not least, this research holds an important place in the contemporary policy debate. As the debate on the role of state in promoting economic growth and development continues, this research suggests that Tanzania needs to break away from the taboo against the industrial policy. Reviving a cultural competitiveness without proactive engagement of the state is a remote possibility. While privatization is considered the best alternative for removing inefficiencies inherent in public enterprises, the process and character of privatization, together with the appropriate institutional interventions, do matter. Finally, in terms of the agricultural development policy and strategy, this research shows that large-scale and small-scale farms need not to be treated as zero-sum game. They can and do coexist, so strategies have to be directed at identifying synergies among them and institutional mechanisms to harness them. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, dear candidate and of course my compliments for not being distracted by our small problems in the uh, audio system. I do think our facility management for doing the most to, uh, to work on that. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, would you please uh, check your mobile telephones and see whether they are switched off because the candidate has already enough problems in the sound system to cope with. And so uh, 